Hi everyone, this is Terry Healy and I'll bring you some extraordinary transformation. Today you are listening to WVLP 103.1 FM, also live streaming at WVLP.org. I am so excited about the guest I have today. Uh, before I introduce her though, I want to thank uh, our sponsor. Uh, our show today was brought to you by Ryan Everhart from Diamond Residential Mortgage. Uh, Ryan brings an unparalleled level of knowledge and service to his clients. He is truly committed uh, to his clients and making sure that they make the best, most empowered decisions for themselves and their families and their pocketbooks. Um, Ryan, is his office is conveniently located on Route 30. It's located at 350 Northland Drive in Valparaiso. His phone number is area code 219-707-8429. Uh, so on that note, I want to welcome a fantastic young lady that I had the opportunity and privilege to meet. Her name is Ali Gersich. She is a senior at Valparaiso High School and has actually uh, spearheaded the effort for the walkout and the demonstration that's going to be coming up next week. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day. and. Oh Scooting out of school to come and have a radio show with me. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you for having um, me. You're quite welcome. So I guess the first question that I have to ask, because I'm not super connected, I don't have any high schoolers anymore, is how was the walkout? How did that go for you? Uh, the walkout went really, really well. We had close to 300 students, I believe, who walked out of classroom, out of their classes. And um, it was honestly one of the most inspirational things I've ever been a part of, especially because we had... Uh, 17 student speakers talk about some of the victims at Parkland and um, just the way that they talked about them. They didn't even know them, but everybody was just so affected by it. And it was just honestly so beautiful to see that side of like the student body. And there was a lot of people out there who I never expected to care about this issue who were out there and who were like cheering us on and um, just showing how passionate they are about it. It was really, really amazing. So who was the who were the most or the one or two? Like you said, you were really surprised by some of the outpouring of the support that you had. Who can you give me two people that? Um, I think it was just kind of like the social groups that kind of came out. Like I, I didn't expect um, there was a lot of uh, not to say that sport kid, athletic kids are not usually a part of this, but like uh, there was a couple students. I don't want to single them out because mm -hmm. that just might uh, ruffle some feathers or something. Right. But um, there was a lot of them who when I looked out into the crowd when I was speaking and I saw them, I was just kind of like blown away that they would like risk getting a detention to come out there. So it was awesome. Now that's an interesting point that you're bringing up because um, my understanding was that a lot of the local school districts had decided not to put any sanction on mm -hmm. students that chose to do the walkout. Was that not the case in Valparaiso? That was not the case in Valparaiso. So um, when I met with the administration, uh, maybe two or three weeks before the walkout, I asked them if like we would get any um, uh, be reprimanded at all for the walkout, and they couldn't give me a direct answer. They just said they were going to treat it a case by case uh, situation, and um, so we knew that we weren't going to be getting off just with impunity. So when we did do the walkout, we all, the next day, we're getting a bunch of detention slips. So we all have detention, or at least the majority of us have detentions on uh, Thursday in the mm. cafeteria. So it's gonna be a really, really big party, I guess. Yeah, no kidding. Mm. But hopefully we're gonna be using the detention for a good cause. We're thinking of doing a letter writing campaign okay. to okay. send to our representatives and also um, to write to the Parkland students just for like commending them for their efforts and just all the amazing things that they're doing. Right, I got that. Mm -hmm. Wow, I wonder if we can put something together and give a little bit of promotion. Oh, yeah. That. You know, why not? Let's, come on down to detention. <laughs> I want to come. Let's put it on my calendar. That sounds like a lot of We're fun. We're going to get pizza. It's yeah. going to be really fun. Yeah. So, okay, so when the administration said we're going to take this case by case, what do you think that they were talking about there? Um, so basically, if you were someone who's had multiple truancies, because when you walk out, you're your truant to your classroom and mm -hmm. so if you had multiple truancies then they were going to give you a harsher punishment but um in reality i don't think that really happened it was just kind of like all over the board everybody just got a detention but right. um it definitely scared off a lot of people from doing the walkout which was really upsetting because on the day of the walkout i had a couple students texting me saying like they've been truant before if they go walk out they're going to get suspended or expelled and they were really nervous about it so 
I like told them how I was so thankful for the support, but I didn't want them to lose their whole like access to a great education for it because you know we need to be educated to uh, kind of move forward with this movement and if people aren't being educated then it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, it kind of works against itself a little bit mm -hmm. it sounds like. So, okay, so here's the question because I have to tell the listening audience that um, I knew that, the, that Ali was going to be a remarkable person. <laughs> I mean, so much word on the street and how I was told over and over again I needed to connect with her. But I have to tell you that um, an hour flew as we sat in a coffee shop and I was absolutely amazed by the depth and what she brings uh, just as a human being and I I shared with her on the way out we're not done playing so you know keep your keep your calendar open until you get pulled away in the next venture of your life because there's a lot more there so all of that said I have to ask the question now that we've got so many so many kids that weren't able to do what they felt called to do. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can create that allows them the opportunity to do that? Um, actually, we have two more big events coming up that um, I'm encouraging everybody to join in on. And one of them isn't during the school day, so okay. uh, that should totally open up the calendar for a lot of people. Um, but on this Saturday, actually, March 24th, uh, me and uh, VU student Gabe Conway, if she's listening, hello, um, <laughs> we are in charge of the March for Our Lives Valparaiso. So we will be meeting at uh, City Hall mm -hmm. at uh, 11 a.m. Well, actually, at 11 a.m., we're meeting at um, the entrance of VU and we're marching downtown to City Hall. And we'll be meeting there and having speeches and uh, registration for voting and um, it's just going to be a really empowering and informative time and I'm so excited for it. We've been planning for it like non nonstop. Um, and Candace Shaw, who has been really instrumental in all of this, she's been helping out a lot too. And then April 20th is the next school walkout. Um, it's actually, it's a nationwide thing and we're getting a whole bunch of different schools from Porter County to all meet together. Okay. And we're trying to get a uh, permit approved to meet downtown and just have a big rally with speeches and performances and all in the name of gun control and just for this amazing movement for the Parkland from the Parkland students. So uh, there's still lots of things students can get involved. And if they're also not involved, uh, don't feel like protests or uh, big rallies are their thing. Um, I am encouraging everybody to get out there and vote. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> At the walkout uh, on my closing speech, I just started getting so emotional and passionate about it. I let a few uh, curse words slip out of my mouth through the bullhorn because I was just so pa I'm so passionate about this and getting students to go out there and vote because the thing is, the people who are being put into power are not willing to make a change, and if they're not willing to make a change, then we're the ones who need to be voting them out. And voting the people who are willing to make a change voting them in and the only way you can do that is if you register to vote and go and vote in the primaries and then all the elections april 9th is the last day you can um register to vote you can go on to indianavoters.org and you can vote and you can register or see if you're registered there because a lot of um people's registrations got vetoed too so a bunch of people had no idea that they weren't even allowed to vote um and so you need to go check and see if you're registered, you need to register, and you need to figure out, you need to be informed. It's your civic duty to um, go out and vote. Uh, I know for a lot of people when they turn 18, they're thinking about, oh, I can buy a lotto ticket, I can buy cigarettes and stuff. Right, for right. me, it was, oh my gosh, I get to actually go vote now because it's such an important, important part of being a citizen is going out to vote. That's how you make sure that your future is secure, is through like who you vote for. I agree. I agree. So, do you think that uh, you know everything that you're up to and you're working on actually ties those two conversations? Because honestly, I hadn't made those connections. Until um, I think it's very tied in together. That's something that um, this movement has been really good at reiterating mm -hmm. is about how important it is to make your voice heard. And there's so many ways to make your voice heard. And if you can't vote, you can always write to your representatives, get your par like influence your parents about what you think is important and just inform other people. So the whole point of this movement is to get people informed and to pass laws that um, just pass common sense gun control, gun control laws. And so the only way that can get passed is if we have people who are willing to pass them in uh, where your representatives are. And you're the one who votes your reps in. So when it comes down to it, this whole thing is about voting and about making sure you march to the polls.
Agreed, agreed. You know, and I know that um, a lot of people have the misconception that they're just one person, mm -hmm. and that one person can't change the climate. Um, but I think enough of enough of the one persons mm -hmm. collectively can. I know that there have been a lot of grassroots movements that have actually turned an election and results of things like that on its head. Oh, you know, yeah. And really changed the trajectory of what, where we're heading collectively. Um, I love what you're up to. I just, <laughs> my heart goes, what else are you doing to promote all that? Because um, my concern now, you said about the rally, you said April 20th, mm -hmm. and that's in the middle of a school day? Um, it's actually going to be a half day for both, so okay. we're leaving at 10, it's going to okay. go into 1. Uh, so we get out of school at 11.45, thankfully, so the students who aren't uh, able to walk out of class, they're mm -hmm. more than welcome to come after school and um, just kind of rally with us. So okay. yeah. And they're aware of that? I'm sure that you guys spread the word faster than oh, any other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Social media has been so important with spreading the word. Uh, my Instagram story is always constantly just talking about the different movement mm -hmm. and like all the different events that we have and just spreading information and stuff. So social media has been a big factor in all of it. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> and I think, you know, we're, we're not quite as, uh, quite as active as you guys are, you mm -hmm. know, as a genre, but we are definitely connected as well in our own ways. Um, so what what my concern is, or I guess my question is, that you got some backlash from the administration, which I got to tell you, I'm frankly shocked about that you all would have this detention. Yeah. Shocked. <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, is there going to be some pre-backlash again from administration? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to speak on behalf of the administration when I'm not really sure where um, they stand for this. Um, I think they'll... We'll probably get in trouble for being truant again. Um, that's expected because uh, according to ACLU, you're allowed to, schools are allowed to punish you if you've been truant, but they can't punish you any further for you protesting or anything mm. like that. They can only punish you for not being in class. And so we're well aware of that. And um, obviously this didn't really stop us the first time. We're all wearing our detentions like a badge of honor. Right. Like all of us, went, as soon as we got it in a class, we were like running out into the hallway saying, I got my detention oh, I got it, and I got stuff. It. So um, whatever the backlash is for the administration, like I told them the first time when I met with them for the walkout, I said um, that you guys can tell us if we're not doing this, like you can not be in support of this, but no matter what, we're still walking out that it doesn't matter if they are against us or for us, we're going out. Right, right. So well, I love that you're that you're treating the detention as a celebration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love that the detention notice itself was like you said, a badge of honor. Yeah. Um, kind of makes me think of like, you know, back in the day when people had a certain cause that they used to wear armbands or things that, that Oh yeah, we were them. thinking of actually starting thinking... making armbands because yeah. a lot of the students at Parkland, they created MSD strong armbands and I thought that was seriously the coolest thing ever. So oh, I, love that I think idea. we're gonna start making armbands and I, stuff. Like, I love that it. would be so much yes. fun. Yes. Like always yes. having something on there just yes. to support the cause. Well, and, and, and you know, it kind of makes me feel like the, the students that chose for their own, uh, their own reasons not to walk out you know, and the consequences for them, but if they had something like that to display, at least everyone knows they're part of that. Mm -hmm. They're standing for that. And whether or not they were yeah. physically there, they're there, they're there mm -hmm. for you. So mm -hmm. uh, that's wonderful stuff. Um, I'm gonna pause now and just do a quick station identification. I wanna thank all of the listeners out there. You are listening to WVLP 103.1 FM, uh, also streaming live at WVLP.org. So thanks so much for tuning in with us. Um, again, we're speaking with Ali Gersich, uh, Valparaiso High School senior, and just incredible human being. And I think <laughs> when I posted, uh, we are also streaming on Facebook Live, I, my introduction was future thought leader. That's kind of <laughs> what I put her as, because I just see like just grander things than I could pick up in a coffee oh shop. But gosh. yeah, lots of good stuff's going to be coming. Um, keep an eye open for her name, because you will <laughs> see her again and again and again, my heart says. So, uh, oh great goodness. stuff coming. Um, so. Wonderful stuff. I So kind of let's go to the April 20th thing because that's the next exciting mm -hmm. piece of this sounds like. Um, I mean, after your celebration on Thursday. <laughs> so. and I, if I could bring lunch in, I'd love to bring you guys lunch. I'm oh, that'd be that. wonderful. Love you. Love you food. <laughs> We're hungry teenagers. Yeah, we'll right. always accept food. It's oh. just whether administration will let um, parents allow into the <laughs> campus. Because for the walkout, they didn't allow any parents in. So they all had to meet at Christ Lutheran across the street. So they were standing really? in solidarity. We knew they were there. It's just we couldn't right. see them right. or hear them because we were like a whole campus away. So that kind of sucked. But. Well, 
and you know, kind of, I can kind of see both ends of the of the spectrum a little bit. Like mm -hmm. maybe administration might have been worried that what if things got really rowdy? Oh yeah, you know, for people, safety. We definitely yeah. appreciated the safety measures that they were putting out for us. I will admit that. Like some of us took it the wrong way, but the majority of us kind of understood what they were trying to do and just trying to keep us safe. Because as much as we want to, um, like, show our support and about gun safety, there's still some people out there who. Um, are willing to hurt us and stuff so it wouldn't be the if something bad happened it wouldn't have been the first time that a protest has gone wrong where oh, students yeah. have been hurt so no and i didn't yeah. think about safety that's interesting what i just saw like furniture flying oh <laughs> <laughs> chairs getting overturned and you know people burning things oh my you gosh know. Oh. i mean the whole bleachers of the football field so yeah, angry right, 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 right exactly right exactly. and then setting it a flame <laughs> Just a Take thing. this, BHS. That's right, that's right. Just a, just a little something. Um, so, what do you, I mean, where do you see all this heading after April? Do you think that, that we're going to see any more conversation about it? Oh, or? my gosh. This is a conversation that I think is going to keep on going until we see the results that we want. You know, mm -hmm. people are saying that we're, like, demanding action. And the thing is, like, you can't demand action. You actually have to put into action to get action. So, right. like, this is something that we are so willing to keep on talking about, to keep working for, um, just keep on voting for the people that will make a change and just, I don't know, empowering everybody. This is such an empowering, um, or not empowering, this is such an inspirational generation, just like watching everybody. I mean, I don't really know what uh, generation I belong to, because sometimes I hear that I'm Generation Z, sometimes I hear I'm, genera I'm a millennial and stuff, so it's just like, just watching from maybe an older generation, see, mm -hmm. seeing some of these like freshmen and middle schoolers, especially elementary schoolers, there was 11 year olds who organized their own walkout in their elementary school. And that is so wow. inspiring because yeah. if that's what elementary students are gonna be like, the adults when they grow up, oh my gosh, this world is gonna be so beautiful because mm -hmm. of it. That's, that's what I'm getting from this is it's such an inspirational movement in the generation, I'm just so, for once in my life, I am so proud of my generation. I'm so proud of them. That is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. I have to give you kudos. I have to say that, you know, and I mean collectively, you and then also everyone else in the way that you're handling things. It's, I think that, um, you know, it's so common for us to come from a place of fear or anger. Mm -hmm. And I am not sensing that and in how you're putting things together and, and pulling things off and making mm -hmm. it happen. So. Um, especially when it's about your own personal safety. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's definitely some anger there. Um, just kind of the fact that uh, I'm a high school student. Um, right now I shouldn't be worried about, um, you know, gun safety laws and creating movements within my own school. I should be worried about going to the parties and uh, going shopping and everything like that. And I, it's just not the case. And I'm not um, bitter about that because I really feel like this is something that I was kind of meant to do. But um, I guess the only anger that I have is that it wasn't taken care of before. And I'm not saying that nobody tried to. Um, it's actually been really heartbreaking. I've had a lot of parents coming up to me saying that they failed us as a generation. Oh, wow. And um, that's not the case, you know? Uh, because uh, they are the ones who kind of inspired us. They're the, one who, they're the ones who raised us to be like this. We're, they're the ones who raised us to make our voices heard, to make a stand when things are not going right. And for that, I say thank you. Um, I've just had to remind parents over and over again that uh, it's not their fault that this didn't get taken care of beforehand. They tried and that's, okay, that's good enough in itself. It's just, you know, sometimes we have to take the extra step and sometimes it bleeds over into the next generation. And it just so happens that it bled into this generation. Um, so, yeah, it's just been uh, it's been very eye-opening. Well, I have to say you have a very forgiving way of approaching this. Oh, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people end up becoming the people they are, maybe sometimes because their parents' contribution, but sometimes in spite of the lack of. Mm -hmm. So however that, however that incites somebody to become who they are, that's fantastic stuff. Um, so you mentioned something just in the middle of that I want to kind of revisit. You said you felt that you were you were supposed to do this or designed for this. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, so uh, I've always been somebody who's very uh, 
caring for other people and I really um, not enjoy but I feel like it's my duty kind of to um, speak out for people who can't really make their voices heard and um, that's just kind of how it's always been um, I think the earliest recollection I have of this is when I was 11 um, I was going through National Geographic and it was the article or not the article the issue about child brides in developing countries and that has stuck with me for so long. I remember going up to my mother and telling her that like, I was like, this is awful. I was like, I need to do something. And I'm like 11 years old. Like I don't even have a concept of what the world is yet. And um, she just kind of really was encouraging. She was like, you know what? That's what you can do when you get older is you can like look out for them. And it's totally stuck with me. I mean, my common app application essay was about child brides in developing countries and what we can do to prevent it. And stuff so it's always been something that's just kind of been with me um I think everybody kind of has that type of thing like some people cooking is their duty like that's what they're amazing at and I wouldn't say I'm amazing at like helping people but I'm definitely trying my best and I definitely feel like it's something that I was called to do and so um I guess when this uh, tragedy struck and I saw that other students were speaking out I was just like well why can't I either so I just kind of hopped on to the big train and uh, it's kind of been since there. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I um, have to tell you that when you agreed to, to be on the show with me, um, I was excited. <laughs> I, uh, I was sharing that with some other people this mm -hmm. weekend. It was actually uh, with a group of adults only and uh, talking that through. And I actually got some negative backlash oh, about really? this. Yeah, yeah. There, seems to be uh, in my age group a lot of people that believe that there really wasn't any passion uh, sometimes behind a, a kid deciding to get up and walk out but that they were kind of going along mainstream kind of just being rebellious why not get out of school and catch some fresh air kind of conversation I was kind of a little shocked mm -hmm. about that um, and actually one lady was pretty vehement it with me about um, how she was so against what it is you're doing uh, I was surprised yeah you know uh, have you seen much of that um, actually, yeah, I have seen a lot of that. Um, I usually get a couple of DMs every day telling me what I'm doing is completely stupid and uh, ineffective. Um, there was a whole argument on one of my posts where I was just talking about the walkout and some girl didn't even know her. She doesn't even go to my school. She's in college and she decided that she was going to try to argue with me about the whole thing. Like she said, um, so what exactly did you accomplish? And all I have to say is what are you accomplishing if you're not saying anything at all? I mean, if we can inspire like at least maybe one person to go out and vote and take a stand, then that in itself is such a beautiful thing. And to the people who are saying that walking out is just an excuse to get out of class, mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing they haven't been in high school for a little while because, um, mm. you know, it's not something that, as bad as high school is sometimes, it's not something that we just want to get out and walk out and do and especially since we were getting reprimanded for it. I mean the students who were walking out were the students half of us were like I've never even gone to the principal's office like I've never been reprimanded and now I have a detention and everybody was so excited about that to like get in trouble for the first time and so um we're just like not we're not students who uh just get in trouble just for the fun of it we're students who are like we are so passionate about this this is our well-beings we're talking about here like students are dying because of this i mean like 96 people a day i believe are killed or affected by some sort of gun violence each and every day just in america and so it's not just like an odd thing to get um have be affected by gun violence and the thing is this has happened in VHS before. It wasn't by a gun, but we've had our threats. We mm -hmm. had a threat this year. We had a threat my sophomore year, so two years ago. And there was a slasher at um, before uh, I was even there. So yeah. um, I remember the, that. Yeah, time. the thing is, like, violence within schools is not um, an odd thing anymore. And that's something we've grown up with, and we're so so tired of it we're so tired of constantly having to do the lockdown drills scared for our life that somehow we are going to get killed that our parents aren't going to be able to see us when we come like they're they're going to send us off and they're not going to see us ever again except in a coffin and so that's just something we're so sick and tired of even having to think about 
And so the fact that people are saying that this is so like impassioned and um, just a way to get out of class, uh, I think that's just kind of, I, I hate to like say names or anything, but I think that's just very ignorant of them to think, to even think that because this is a movement that is affect, this is a movement that is international now. There's a march or a walkout on every single continent and that in itself is such a beautiful thing because we have so much support. Um, but I just kind of say, get your head out of the sand if you're not, um, if you're not like opening your eyes to see the reality that we've been forced to live in. Because a lot of the people in their gener like in the older generations never even had to think about having a shooting within your school. But this is something I have been practicing lockdown drills since I was in kindergarten. Wow. And that in itself is such a scary thing. Like I remember coming home one day and my grandparents were just kind of like, you had to do what now? Yeah. You had to go hide all the lights were turned off? Like you had to like pretend that there was an active shooter. Like that's so foreign to so many people, but so many people don't realize that this is like the reality that we live in. So it's just, it's time we make a change because this is our world. We're the ones who are gonna be left in it for like much longer time. And we have the right to change it. I, so yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, I am absolutely just, well, I can tell you that uh, I never thought those thoughts before. Mm -hmm. I, it never occurred to me that every day when you go to school, that's what you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. It's like you hear a loud bang. I remember there was, because we're under construction at VHS right now, mm -hmm. and there was a loud bang, and all of us kind of like went like this. We ducked a little bit, and we mm -hmm. were just so scared for a second because we were like, oh my gosh, is there a shooter? Like, are we going to get attacked and stuff like that? And that's just something that's so common for us. Like. Now we're kind of like, okay, is it construction or is somebody coming to kill us? Like, we just don't know half the time, so. And have you felt that way your entire school career? Has that been more more accelerated recently? Um, I think it wasn't as uh, prominent in my life until Sandy Hook. Okay. Um, as soon as Sandy Hook happened, uh, it was very, it was very much in the back of my mind that this could happen to me or this could happen to one of my siblings. That's what I'm most scared of. I'm not even, like I'm very scared for my own life, but I'm most scared for my siblings' lives because I have a seven-year-old sister. She's only in first grade and I'm leaving next year and then going to college and I'm just terrified that I'm not going to be leaving her in a safe place and I want to ensure that she gets to grow up and that all my younger brothers get to grow up and see the world and help change it and stuff. So that is mostly what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for my siblings and I'm fighting for my children. When I have children, I don't want them to have to go through this. I got that, I got that. Wow, uh, I have to tell you, this is like eye-opening. I look and you're describing what you go through and at number one, I have just profound compassion, mm -hmm. uh, very limited understanding of what that must feel like. It's almost like a sense of, you have to be on hyper-vigilant awareness all the mm -hmm. time. I can't. I'm, and I'm looking in my own life and thinking, where do I have to feel like that? And, and I, honestly, it's nowhere. Mm -hmm. There's the only times that I think about, you know, my own mortality is probably when I take a flight. You mm -hmm. know, when you're going to ready to take off an airplane and land again. It's just, aside from that, I go along day to day, and it's a, it's a pretty gentle place and a pretty gentle world. So, I have to tell you that um, you have given me just an insight, and hopefully. To everyone listening as well of, of you know that that this isn't just a bunch of kids who want to slack and then get you know take a scoot out of school for a minute I mean my goodness gracious and and do you think that you know even you say most of the people in our generation never had to live with that and you're right we did not mm -hmm. but do you think a lot of parents don't have an understanding of what their kids are going through um, they probably have a slight understanding but um, high school and just schools in general has changed so much and I think that's taken some time for parents to understand that uh, the world that we live in is a much different world than what they grew up in. I mean now uh, social media kind of ru rules our lives sure. and um, so many different things in high school are different and so um, I think it just takes a lot of understanding for parents to kind of realize it. It takes time and um, the willingness of the students to kind of explain what's happening because a lot of people don't really know what's happening to their students in an everyday basis. And 
Like when we have a lockdown drill, not many students tell their parents. It's just like, oh, we had another lockdown drill. Like it's just kind of like a normal thing. Like we have it like once every grading period, I think. And it's just kind of like, a, oh yeah, we had a lockdown drill. Had to pretend that there was somebody coming to shoot our mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, wow. Yeah. So I think it just parents need to kind of realize what's going on because I know a lot of parents aren't in support of the walkout and granted there's so many parents who are so supportive of this and for that I'm forever thankful for all the support that we've gotten from different parents but there's a lot of parents who aren't supportive and I think that's just because of a lack of understanding of what we have to go through on an everyday basis. I think understanding yes but at, at the very basic level lack of awareness mm -hmm. so you know I think about myself and I think about the people that I've chatted with about this topic recently and just I think under, you need the awareness before you can have the understanding and um, I'm not sure that is that what's being communicated is that getting out there do you think um, I'm actually not sure if it's been communicated as much as it needs to be I think because it's been such like a daily part of our lives you know when you something happens to you like over and over again and you just kind of get really kind of like oh yeah it's just a, another another day another Another time, another lockdown drill. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where we just are so used to it, and then it's like such an everyday thing for us that um, it's not being really vocalized. I think it's starting to become a lot more vocalized, um, but I still think we have a long way to go of just making more people aware of just the everyday lives because we can go straight to the tragedy and talking about um, Parkland, but the thing is, like, I remember I was reading somewhere on an article and it was about these kindergartners who were told what to do if there was an active shooter situation and about how they need to be running around and making as much noise as possible to distract the shooter. And it wasn't to save their lives, it was to save the other students' lives because at least that um, delays some time before the shooter is able to get out because if he's pointing, then he kind of has to follow them a little bit more. And that is so sickening to think yeah. that li these little kindergartners are even having to think about that. Right. And so it just, it breaks, it breaks my heart to even have to think about that these kindergartners are being taught what to do if there's an active shooting situation and that they should sacrifice themselves for their other students. And that's a beautiful thing in itself, but it shouldn't be something that has to be taught. Well, or that they should be saddled with that. Yeah, that's that a lot, that's a lot to put on the shoulders. Yeah. I'm going to take a second and uh, thank our listening audience. You are listening to WVLP 103.1 FM, uh, also live streaming on WVLP.org. Again, a great thank you. So much gratitude here for my guest, uh, Ali Grisich, Valparaiso High School senior, who is one of the main uh, gals that have spearheaded the movement uh, for the lockout and subsequent activities. I keep thinking there's one demonstration, but there's many things going on. So. A little, bit, uh, a little bit bigger world. Boy, you open up so much conversation and so much illumination that needs to happen. It's just, and you're so impassioned and, and impassioning, if that's a word. Uh, it almost makes me want to say, well, what can I do to support that? How do we, how do we increase the awareness of that? I, I am still, uh, for those of you that are just tuning in, um, absolutely awestruck by Ali's description of you know what uh, a typical student has to deal with now in their concern for their for their their own personal safety let alone what she's just de describing with uh, the safety of those around us my goodness gracious and here we are looking at you going learn excel thrive I and mean, you know all of these things on top of the whole thing um, I do want to ask a question though. I kind of want to go a little bit a different direction with it but um, just to, the, we don't have to spend a lot of time on yeah. this but um, my feelings around social media are that those kind of um, venues actually make us more disconnected from each other and I have the sense that those things actually make you more connected uh, so is that uh, can you share a little bit about how you're using that platform or those platforms to connect to other, ch other students um, well the thing is I personally have a pretty strange connection with social media I'm someone who um, is when I'm on, I'm very prominent and I make sure that my uh, everything's kind of being heard, but uh, I myself have to take breaks from social media and I think that's something that a lot of students I've talked to have to do. Uh, but I think the great thing about social media is just how this movement has been spread through social media. 
and um, I think there's a good way to use social media and I think there's an awful way to use social media and I think uh, so far I've been pretty good about using social media for the right reasons and just kind of spreading awareness. Um, I'm so sorry to anybody who follows my Twitter or my Instagram because all you're going to be seeing is just activist, activism posts and stuff like that. And I mean, I shouldn't say I'm sorry because I'm doing that for a reason and um, I'm not really sorry about it, but um, uh, I think there's definitely a good way and a bad way and um, it's just kind of, there's definitely a disconnect sometimes if you're not doing it properly, but you can definitely um, find connections through social media. I mean, some of my like favorite people I've ever even had the, like, I don't even have been able to see them, but I've been able to talk to them and... Um, Excuse me. Uh, I think there's just like there's so many people out there in the world, and um, if social media is able to connect you, then I say totally go for it. But um, I think if you're using social media for the wrong reasons, such as um, uh, hurting someone else or um, putting yourself down in a way, if you use social media as like a toxic thing, then I think there's definitely downsides to it. But Overall, uh, I was actually talking to my mom and Anne about this one time, and it's just, social media is just like your own um, special magazine, kind mm -hmm. of. Like you mm -hmm. can just kind of like choose what you want to see and what you don't want to see, and I think that's kind of a cool thing. But it's very important to make sure that you don't also compare yourself to everybody's lives because it's also a very curated, um, a very, very, very curated, uh, just a little piece of someone's life. And I think that's also very important to understand that it's not just everybody's having the best time in their life all the time it's just kind of like okay like this is what they want to show and this is what they don't want to show so I think if you use social media in the right ways it's a wonderful wonderful thing but um, it's also nice to unplug every once in a while same here I I typically stay pretty unplugged <laughs> so uh, it, but it's a necessary evil mm -hmm. I think we just kind of have to use it and, and sometimes I like it you know sometimes yeah. I like to get reconnected and things like that but again you're gonna probably pull in from the common person, you're going to tap into their own pain, their own insecurities, uh -huh. and their own agenda. Yeah. Whether or not they're aware of it. Not that that's intentional mm -hmm. per se, but um, so also kind of want to go a different direction with you if you're open with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when I had the opportunity to talk to you this weekend in the coffee shop, you had told me about some pretty exciting stuff you've got on the horizon. Can you <laughs> share that with our listeners? Um, yeah. So, uh, most students or most of my friends are heading off to college next year, which is amazing and um, something I'll be doing too, but uh, I'm actually going to take a break in between there and through Rotary Youth Exchange, I will be going to Romania for a year. Oh. Yeah, so I didn't get a say in where I was going, which is uh, kind of like a strange thing, but I'm very much someone where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this and it's just going to throw everything into the wind and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, I'm going through Rotary to go to Romania. Um, I'm not even sure what city I'm going to live in either. Um, but I'm going to take a second senior year and just learn the culture, learn the language, uh, just really get to know how other people live because I have such um, a curiosity to see how everybody kind of lives and stuff. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really, really cool. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be amazing. Um, and I gotta guess that when you're over there, you're gonna probably do some traveling and get even connected to other cultures mm. and, and experiences and things like that. Do yeah. You, are you just gonna be staying with one family or? How um, you, actually, yeah. how the uh, exchange goes is they want me to get an understanding of how many different people live. So mm. I think it's every three or four months, I'll be moving to a different um, host family. I'll stay in the same city and the same town and everything, so I don't have to switch schools, or at least they try not to make me switch schools. Sometimes some people have to go to private schools and end up at a public school for the last part of their exchange and uh, that's just kind of something that I'm expecting I guess. But um, I'll be moving to three different families, three or four different families, just kind of get used to different dynamics and how different people live and stuff like that. So it's going to be really awesome. How yeah. exciting. I know. Oh it's going to be goodness. so much fun. I'm wow. so excited. Wow. It's like one of those things where um, you talk about it a whole lot and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be an exchange yeah. student and yeah. stuff, but it hasn't settled into my mind yet. Like I've been talking to all the other exchange students where I'm currently an outbound, which means next year I'll be an inbound. And so right now within my district, there's different inbounds and outbounds. And so I've been talking to a lot of my outbound uh, friends and we're just like, yeah, this doesn't feel real. And then we were talking to our inbound students. And so like people from Germany and Brazil and Holland and Belgium and all of that. 
and they're like, oh yeah, we didn't even understand that we were actually doing this until we touched down on the airplane. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's just kind of like one of those things where you could talk about it as much as you want, but it doesn't feel real until you're actually there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is you're not gonna hit it until you until you hit the soil. Yeah. Uh, is when it's gonna hit. I have to tell you though, uh, as a mother, <laughs> you're telling me this story and, uh, and I can feel what your mother must be feeling. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Thunk, 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 thunk. Oh <laughs> what gosh. do you mean three different families? Do I get to meet them? <laughs> you know? <laughs> How do I make sure my daughter's in a safe space? Have they in, have they shared with you that they have any apprehension? Or? Um, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's funny. Um, my mom, we had a family, uh, or I guess it was a mother da uh, mother daughter father retreat that we all had to go on. So like student and their parents, and they were just kind of talking about it, and all of the parents are just kind of like, it's kind of the same thing. Like it, it feels. Like they know it's gonna happen, but it doesn't feel real. And then sometimes it hits the parents in waves. Um, sometimes my mom is like, oh, "You're going to Romania! Like that's so much fun! You're gonna go see the world, and like everything's gonna be so amazing and stuff." And then other times she'll come into my room and she'll be like, "Please don't go." She's like, "What are you? What am I gonna do?" And I'm like, "I don't know what I'm gonna do with you without you either. Like I'm the one who's gonna be overseas without anybody. At least you have your have the family." Like. Right. Oh, but it's just so it's so weird because my family and I are super super close. Like people like to joke that we're like a clan because we always stick <laughs> together. Like my brother is my best friend without a doubt. And so um just the idea of leaving them for 11 months. Sometimes I'm like, "Oh gosh, like yeah. what am I going to do?" But for the most part, it's been just complete and utter support. Um sometimes my younger brother, my youngest brother is a little confused that uh that I'm going, he kind of forgets and stuff. Like, he's in middle school, so, like, he's not young or anything like that. But um, sometimes he's like, oh, yeah, you're going to Romania. Like, he seems very bothered, but everybody else seems really kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might be surprised his reaction. Yeah. Um, you're not there. Um, I don't know if he's going to escort you to the air airport when you go to fly out, but... Um, well, thank God for technology. Oh, you my know? gosh, yes. FaceTime is going to be a blessing. Yeah, I can see that. All those, or even just Skype, whatever it is that you can use to yeah. to communicate with them. But I don't know. Just to present to that whole mom thing, I can I could see if you were mine, it would be, you know, at one moment you're 18, and then all of a sudden you're six. <laughs> and then you're 18, and then you're four. Yeah, <laughs> you know, kind of going back and forth and riding the wave. Um, so aside aside from that, I have to ask: Do you have any other intentions? Aside, you know, you said you mentioned like experiencing other cultures and things like that. Anything else out there for you? Um. As in after the exchange or during the exchange? During the exchange. During the exchange. Uh, well, <laughs> my wildest dreams are that I'm going to meet a beautiful European man and we're going to raise bilingual babies together. Oh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just uh, me reading too many uh, romance novels, right. uh, which is totally understandable. The thing is, uh, European boys are probably just like the guys at my school. and. If that's the case, I'm not really interested all that much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it'll be, I'm kind of just going with a very open mind. I just, I want to be, be fluent in a different language other than um, English, because I think that's very important to kind of like, before you're able to really understand a culture, is you also really need to understand the language. And I just really, really want to be fluent in Romanian, which is going to be difficult, I know. But, yeah, I'm Are also just kind of trying to figure out kind of, who I am and I think that in itself is gonna be very um, it's gonna be a difficult time next year but I think I'm gonna come out of it so sure of myself mm. that it should be it should be okay yeah well I what well, I think it like in, in many things especially when you take on something of that kind of a, of a of a scope it's like there's probably gonna be so many things that you would never have thought could yeah. come up for you and and how you'll re-experience yourself and all kinds of things. Just you can't use the same the same modus operandi if you're in another country. Yeah, you know, kind of being mm -hmm. you. Um, take a second, and I want to acknowledge our listeners today and those that are tuning in on Facebook Live. And I think we've got some other technology going here on Ollie's phone as well. <laughs> uh, you are listening to WVLP 103.1 FM, also live streaming on WVLP. Uh, today I have the honor uh, of interviewing a delightful young lady, uh, Ollie Gersich. She is a Valparaiso High School senior, and we got connected because I was told she was one of the main people in charge of 
the recent walkout uh, in Valparaiso and also in charge of the upcoming demonstrations that are coming forward. So that it was kind of a a little difficult to, to access her. She's a pretty busy little gal. So uh, I had three, actually three different people say, let me connect you, let me connect you. And it was the third, thank you very much, Andy, Angie, uh, for making those dots connect. And thank you also to Ali's mom, because uh, she was also part of that. Um, no irony, I think it would take a mother like that to raise a daughter like that. So, uh, but thank you for helping us connect the dots, because it's important. And uh, I know that my vantage point has permanently changed from this exchange and this interview with Ali. So thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, any plans for post-Romania and, and after the fella? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to bring him back to the States, right? If he's wonderful, you're going to marry him over here. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to college afterwards. Um, I think either going to Loyola or DePaul. Um, I've always dreamed of going to college in Chicago, it's just been kind of something that's like, oh yeah, that's going to happen, like I'm going to college in Chicago, like, because uh, I have an aunt who lives in Wicker Park, and so I'm constantly there, I mean, I was there this weekend, and it's just, that's just kind of my home, I feel like, like the city is my little, like, happy place, it's where I go if I, like, just want some fresh air, some people go to the countryside, but I go to Chicago, oh, I just really like the busyness of it, so I'm going to go to college, um, I shared with you that I wanted to be a human rights lawyer, and um, I'm not sure if uh, law school is my cup of tea, but just anything that kind of uh, puts me in the category of helping people, I think this is something that's definitely opened my eyes. Um, for a while, I wanted to do something in show business. Uh, if you don't know, I sing with the Blues Project a lot, um, oh. and so uh, it's just been something I'm very passionate about, but I just think that has just kind of opened up different um, doors for me to kind of just be comfortable in my own skin and to be, uh, I guess, more enough, confident enough in myself that I'm able to make a stand. So anything that I can do that like just betters the world in a way, that's what I want to do. Which, what that is, I'm not sure yet. I think that's what the whole exchange is going to be for, is to kind of figure that out. But yeah, just go to college and then... Uh, See where the wind blows. See where the wind blows. <laughs> I'm very, I used to tell my dad this. I was like, I'm just the go with the flow type of gal. Like, because uh, my parents and their friends would ask me what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go to college. And I was like, I don't really know. I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, I'm just going to go with the flow. And then my dad was like, you're going to go to the flow all the way to McDonald's. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, fine. <laughs> I'll figure out yeah. something, but I don't know what yet. <laughs> well, my heart says, and, and I could be mistaken that you are going to end up um, being an advocate and actually changing a lot of conversation and probably changing our world. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it matters if you're working at McDonald's or you're doing law degree. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna accomplish those things just Thank because you so of who you are. You know? Thank you. So, McDonald's isn't necessarily a bad thing. Oh, so no, not at all, not at all. Don't disrespect anybody, but that's, oh, no. their, that's their world and they love it. Um, well, that's great stuff, I love mm -hmm. it. Uh, so, question, a couple questions. Uh, so <laughs> open up so many doors it's fantastic um, if you could narrow down um, one or two things that you would like to tell other students um, about what you're up to with the, with the, the recent cause um, I think the biggest thing I kind of want to just share is that a lot of this movement is getting discredited because it's led by students and the thing is that does not make a difference at all, except it just strengthens it. I mean, if you look back, um, the founding fathers were in their 20s and then their teens, and they're the ones who totally created this nation. And um, if you look back to it, if you're religious or know anything about Christianity, then you know that uh, Jesus was pretty young, and all of his disciples were super young. Um, I was reading an article about it, and uh, Jesus was the only one who was able to actually pay the Jewish tax, and you had to be 21 to oh, pay wow. the tax. And so that whole movement was created by a bunch of teenagers. Um, the Civil Rights Movement was created by a whole bunch of teenagers. I mean, the main person was MLK, but he had the backing of so many students, and that's what made this go round. I mean, they had the sit-ins. That was all students. That was all young students. And stuff so I think the biggest thing I have to say is just because your age ends in the teens does not mean 
anything except that you have more time and more energy to make this issue known and to um, put action behind your words and stuff. So uh, just don't worry about how old you are. It's all, age is but a number. It's all about your mental capacity. And so um, if you feel strongly about this, but you're like, oh, I'm like only 13, I'm 14. I'm like only a sophomore in high school or whatever. Who cares? Oh my gosh, who cares? You can make a change. You can make your voice heard. All of these amazing movements have all been led by students, by young people, by who were fed up with the world, the way the world was. And so they decided to change it. And that in itself is so beautiful. And that applies to you too. Don't think it just applies to me or to a couple other students. That applies to you. If you're a student who's listening to this and you're wondering, does this even apply to me? Yes, it does. Okay, because I didn't think I was gonna be up for this. Like I, when I was posting on social media, I did not think that I would end up on a radio show today talking about this. And the thing is, that could be you too. You, if you're in a different school, make your voice heard. Start a movement within your school. The only way we can get this going and keep this momentum is if other students are willing to make a change and to make a stand. So that's the biggest thing I have to say is, it shouldn't matter who you are or how old you are or whatever your political um, affiliations are. Who cares? This is a bipartisan movement. So you could be a Republican, you could be conservative, you could be a liberal, you could be a Democrat, you could be a libertarian. I don't, I don't care. No one else cares. Just stand for what you believe in and go vote. If you can vote, go vote or register or help register people. Go vote. Yeah. That's good. Help register people. That's mm -hmm. something that somebody can do if they're not of voting age. Oh, yeah. It's super easy. I was able to register a couple of my friends. Just, they gave me their driver's license, and I just registered during math yeah. class. I was like, okay, you're registered to go. There That's you go. fabulous. Go vote. I don't care who you vote for. Just go vote. So, Ali, where can students find you if they want to connect? And um, I'm all over the interweb. Um, <laughs> I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and used to dabble in the whole YouTube scene when I was in middle school oh. and a freshman. So if you really want to see some cringy videos, it's there too. Um, but just seriously look me up under Ollie Gersich on uh, anything and my name should pop up. Ollie Gersich is a pretty uh, unique name in itself. So I don't think any other people should pop up but me, um, or at least I hope, or else someone's stolen my identity. Well, and I'm hopefully nobody whacked <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, if you want to talk to me, go ahead and uh, show up on my, just look me up anywhere. Um, I'm also a senior at Buffalo High School, and so um, I kind of dawdle around in the hallways, or and I go to the bathroom a lot. So if you see me in the bathroom or in the hallway, go ahead and reach out, and uh, we can talk. I've actually been in communication with a lot of different school students from different schools and stuff, and it's been through social media. So um, it's a big world out there, but um, you can, it's pretty easy to find me, so yeah. Last name is spelled G-R-C-I-C-H, for those of you that don't know how to spell her last name. Uh, first name, O-L-L-I-E. Mm -hmm. It's like the skateboard trick. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Did you, they probably didn't think about that when they named No, you. no, oh, I was actually oh. named after my great-great-grandmother, and then she oh. had a twin brother named Raleigh, so it was Ollie and Raleigh. <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. didn't know if that was short for something. Oh, no, just Dolly. Just Dolly. Just Dolly. Very neat. Mm -hmm. Very neat. So that's a, probably some fascinating parents, I think, I guess. They're probably a lot of fun. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. So great. <laughs> I like that. Um, love that. Love what you had to, to say to students out there. Um, Going to ask the same question, but this time, if you could address it to the adults out there, or even a, a, something, one or two things that you would really love to convey. Um, to the adults, mm -hmm. I would have to say uh, we need your support. Um, even though this is a student-led movement, we need your support. We are just kids, but just because we're kids doesn't mean that we're not powerful, because don't get me wrong, we are very powerful beings. But um, we also need the support of our parents, we need the comfort of our parents, because um, sometimes, even myself, I just get so overwhelmed. I remember after the walkout, I was just so overwhelmed with everything that, like, I had to go out and talk about students dying, and that to myself just kind of wrecked me a little bit. 
and uh, my mother was there to give me a hug and just kind of urge me on and just kind of remind me how proud of uh, proud of me she was and that's just something that we really really need because as much as we're spearheading this we still need um, we still need the love and affection that a kid needs because this is a lot to tackle I mean none of us really expected a couple months ago that we'd be doing this so uh, just having the support of our parents and then also just if you don't have a student who is involved in this just finding a student and making it known that you support them I get messages from parents from Facebook all the time and it's something it's the main it's not the main thing but it's something that's so um, just kind of rewarding to know that I have so many different adults on my side because I think it's really important to kind of make sure that everybody knows that this is a uh, multi-generation movement and um, just knowing that we have support and you guys are the ones who have been voting for so long and so um, just kind of let yourself be open-minded because I know there's a lot of candidates out there who um, are willing to tackle this problem head on. And so just kind of keep your uh, ear to the ground and just kind of like listening for the candidates that you really feel like will make a change and voting for those people. Because um, not every one of the students who is a part of this movement can vote. And um, so you need to be their voice too because you guys will be leaving this world to us and we want to make sure this world is wonderful for the next generation too. It's kind of like if you're, if there's a generation below you, you need to make sure that you're bettering it as much as possible for the generation after you. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Just make sure your support is known. And also just kind of encourage your students too. If you feel like they're a little like, oh, I don't know if I should walk out and stuff. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble. Then let your students know. I mean, I didn't even get involved in this until my mother said, oh, I hope that there's a walkout within school. I really feel like there needs to be something done. And as soon as she said that, just a little click, and I was like, okay, I'm on it, I'm job. doing it, I'm doing it. And it was all because I had the okay from my mom. So just make sure that your student or someone that you are friends with who's a student just knows that um, what they're doing is a good thing and that they have your utmost support because we all need that everybody needs support Everybody needs kind of a lending hand and um, we're just calling all of you to be the lending hand I love that. I love that. Well, you um, have all been tuning in to hear a fantastic interview with Ali Gersich uh, Can't thank you enough and and again as I said in the coffee shop I'm gonna say it again. Can't wait to play with you again <laughs> as you as you continue to evolve and we'll see where you go and what you do. Um, you are listening to WBLP at 103.1 FM, streaming live at WBLP.org. I also want to thank our underwriter for today's show, uh, Ryan Everhart with Diamond Residential Mortgage. And don't make the assumption that all mortgage companies are the same or that all experience levels are equal because they are not. Uh, Ryan brings unparalleled knowledge and experience and concern and compassion to the industry and we thank him. Um, his office is located on Route 30, um, 350 Northland Drive in Valpo. You can reach him. His direct line is area code 219-707-8429. My goodness gracious. There's just not words to convey the gratitude, Ali. Thank and you so much for having me. Can't thank you enough. And I know that you've uh, shifted my perspective by leaps and bounds. And one of those things that probably won't even hit me uh, for another couple of days. And I'm sure that you've done that for a lot of the listeners as well. So can't be more grateful that our that our paths crossed. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me this platform. This is incredible. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see if I can get the music to cue back up. And uh, thank you all for listening. Have a wonderful.